same time. But the comforter can. God is speaking to us that he's sending and is sending and will send the spirit of Elijah, which, is, which was a spirit of prayer. He's known for being, number one, a prayer warrior, and he's known for being, number two, somebody who would draw a line in the sand and say, if you ain't on the Lord's side, you better look out. And so, he says, the reason I got to do that is that the hearts of the fathers need to be turned to the children, and the hearts of the godly fathers. Children usually do what their fathers do, even if they have association with them, even into uh, their, their adulthood. There's something about a father. We, we try to think that fathers don't affect us because they're absent, but there are a lot of men that mimic their fathers. They are absent with their children. Amen. But he said he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. Now, what a father does is he affects his children. He affects his daughters. Daughters develop an attitude toward men based upon their fathers. You may say, I don't, but they do. They either see men as passive it's, you can get over it because daughters are usually the father's first little queen besides the mother. They dance, and then father just becomes jello. He can get, she can get stuff that the boys can't get. The boys get a gruff voice, get the lawnmower, get outside, <laughs> wash the windows. But the little girl come up and starts twisting everything, and she learns her first manipulation through her father, not a mother. Because mother will see the kitchen and say, you need to sit your little nappy self down and let me comb that kitchen. Father don't see the kitchen. He just see his little boo-boo-boo-boo, sugar, sugar. Oh, come here, sugar, come here. You know, pick her up and kiss it on her. And she learns that if she twists and turns, if she keeps asking, if she cries, if she pouts, she's going to get what she wants. And she takes that into adulthood. And she chooses men based upon her father. If he was that way or if he's another way. But she makes her first observation of what power she has through how her father responds. Amen. If he's very forceful and demanding, she starts seeing men as that way. So it's important. And that's why he's saying, he turned the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Now in this, he's talking about godly fathers. He says, the only reason I don't turn this place upside down is because I am waiting for men like Elijah and women too, but that spirit to get in the earth. Those men who will be unwavering, who won't, if all of the family get together and say, let's crucify dad and mama's with him. He stands there and says, we're not doing that. And you know and I know, every movie you watch, every television, it's if the woman pouts, and this is not an indictment on women, but if she pouts, if she cries, if she go on strike, if she decides I'm not going to do something, the man is supposed to give in so she can have her way. The children, if the father's saying we're not doing that, it's the mother who becomes the mediator, and the children pick up on it. Uh, mama go, she'll go block for us. She'll go get old Billy Goat Gruff to change his mind. She'll make him buy us an ice cream cone with his tight self. <laughs> he won't even let us ride in the car talking about his insurance don't cover us. <laughs> mama, I'm tired of walking everywhere. <laughs> Got a bunch of kids, kids walking behind the car. Daddy all dressed up, kids, <laughs> let me stop. <laughs> <laughs> but, 
But God's looking for fathers. Y'all know that story. <laughs> Stop, Steve. God's looking for children, fathers who can turn their children back to him. In fact, if a father's in the home, he's supposed to ensure that the children never leave, especially while they're in that house. Amen. But I'm just trying to get you to see how the world has changed that. Fathers like uh, Bill Cosby, he's either weird, money and weird, just shut up and buy us stuff, or he's a Al Bundy, you know. <laughs> he, it's, everything father is always delusional. You know, he's, he's weird. He's not. I, I, I could probably think later when I leave this place of, of some positive uh, fathers on television. But most fathers are kluts. They drop the ball, you know. And the world has presented the father as somebody who's always inadequate and unable to manage his household. And that's in the world now, such that women feel like they have got to go the extra mile because all they need him for is physical maintenance, but they can handle the big stuff. See? And that didn't just start in their relationship. It started when they was children. They saw fathers either absent, mama handling stuff. The lights are on because mama would pull that money out of her breast. You know, every mother had that, that pocketbook up in her breast. Because daddy wanted that money for drinking. He wanted it for gambling. He wanted it for womanizing. And so that picture is how the world presents men, and a lot of men walk in that picture because there's so much pressure to do it. Y'all ain't saying nothing. But that's not how God intended for it to be. They are supposed to work together, but the father had a distinct role. But we know today that it's said so many ways, I don't need him. But that's not true. Because a child, even adult, I've been ministering nearly 50 years. You know how many both men and women that I've had to talk to that had issues because their father wasn't there? And all the fathers wasn't dead. They were just uninvolved in spiritual matters. Some of them would buy them cars, but wouldn't care if they had a dope addict in the car driving with them. Make sure they had clothes and all that, but could not father them from a godly perspective. So I'm trying to see you, get you to see what the world needs from God's perspective. The Bible says in the book of Matthew... Verse 27, chapter 27, verse 45, 47, it says, Now from the sixth hour there was darkness all over the land until the ninth. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Some of them that stood there, when they heard that said, this man calleth for Eliza. So see, even when Jesus was calling on God, people thought, well, he's calling on Elijah. But here is a situation that even Jesus himself is saying that one of the most important things that a child needs, especially a male child, is to know that my father is there. Jesus, who walked closely with God, who was full of the Holy Ghost, not just intermittently, sometimes on Sunday, sometimes on Monday, sometimes never, but all the time, came to a place in his life when for a split second, well, it was more than a split second, it was a few hours, he experienced life without a father. And he cried out, I don't want this, to be in a world without my father's influence without my father's protection, with my father's teaching, with my father's love. And there are men in their 40s, 50s, 60s that are crying 
Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. Father, why did you forsake me? You know, the truth will never be told to some of them why Father left. Again, I'm not blaming any female, but sometimes at some point they need a grown-up conversation where both parties, even though they're not married anymore, for that child that the doctors keep saying, well, we done done all we can to help you, but we don't know what to do. Both mom and daddy need to sit down and say to him, the reason your father left is, number one, he needs to tell his truth and she needs to tell hers. Because you wouldn't be able to count all of the kids and adult kids and young kids who ask this question, why did my father leave me? Because they don't understand the dynamics of a relationship. That mom and daddy, after they consummated and had you, they start looking at each other and decided, I don't want to be with you. In many cases, it was the father. He left. He couldn't be still. He couldn't let the grass grow under his feet. But in many cases, it was the mother. But we don't need to fight or ask to whose fault it was, but... There are young men and old men that are asking themselves that question. Why and where is my daddy? Grown men my age that deep down inside still say, I wish I had known my daddy. Do I look like him? Do I walk like him? Do I talk like him? They have fathered kids, and they, they don't understand why they can't connect. Because even if you go to church all the time and read your Bible all day long, there's still an enemy that wants to say as a father, you was a, a sperm donator, and we don't need you anymore. But we do need you to work and bring some money and pay bills. But we don't want to hear what you have to say. Your opinion is not as important. Because it's mama's house now. And most men will check out. They hit the streets. I'm not blaming women. I'm blaming men for not staying. There are usually reasons that they don't stay. But at some point, they are, they are saying, you're not the woman that we had the baby with. And she may say the same, but usually a woman will stay most of the time, not always, but the man, he's, I'm out of here because his father wasn't there. Just like they say that divorce is easier the second and the third time. It's easy for him to check out because all he got to do is think, my daddy wasn't there. My mama raised me. So what the world needs to understand, especially you who are in blended families, th those are not his kids. You need to be extra careful. Now, again, <laughs> I sound like uh, to me, there may be heard somebody saying, well, why I got to be careful? Because those are not his kids. Y'all got together and you got kids that are adolescent, preteen, and the two of y'all ain't getting together. It's not hard for him to one day say, and you paying for the house too? I wish I could get some amens out of this crowd. It's not hard for men in this day because they're not prayerful. See, I'm out of here. I don't care how good you look, but I don't have command. I tell the kids to clean up their room. You go in there and cook them pie. Make them pie. <laughs> I tell them they can't watch TV until this. 
You tell them I'm being too harsh. I'm talking in this tone. You say quit shouting at them. But when they turn out insecure or some old transvestite, show them how to put a dress on. Then you want me to talk to me about little Billy because you took him to church. Fathers, some have soft voices. Some don't. But we have allowed the world to tell us that the father is always supposed to be the, a mouse. No, he's not supposed to tear up the furniture and kick the house. And everybody's in terror of him. But the world has told us that he better whisper. Some of y'all need to go into the military for a weekend. When you command troops that are not listening, you can't keep whispering. I'm not condoning shouting and screaming, but you can't keep, would y'all march today? Y'all feel like marching? Y'all want to fight the enemy? The Russians is in Y'all don't feel like it, huh? Okay, well, maybe tomorrow, they right over the hill. What you going to do? You start commanding. Because you see that this platoon is acting like elf troop. And that's what the world don't want. And if you don't want a commander, stop asking God for a husband. Because not only is he a lover, but he's a commander. And if he can't walk in his commandant clothes, he probably don't want to walk in his loving shoes either. Yeah. Well, he ain't going to do it very well because that is part of why God called men. Now, if you're going to sapphire on him, book your eyes and pop your Egyptian neck, you're free to do so. But make sure them y'all kids, <laughs> when you do all that, he might stay a little bit longer, but you, them ain't his kids, and you, you popping your neck and chewing your gum and bucking your eyes, hands on your hip, you're going to be alone. <laughs> I didn't say you had to kiss nobody's uh, foot or nothing. I'm just saying you just need to think about some stuff. And a lot of people don't. Why? Because they, 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 they got them through the flesh. They figure, I'll keep them through the flesh. But if they ever get a hold of God, God's going to tell them, command your household. The Bible says in the book of Luke, chapter 15, verse 20, amen, we just looked at a father who is there. It's important that the father be there. I jumped ahead too quick, but be there. Be at the games. Be at the basketball, baseball games. Sometimes fathers are slow. My father, I was a, they said I was an excellent baseball player, but my father only came to one game. And he came because his friends urged him. Now, later in life, he, he downloaded and gave me something that was better than baseball. But many times when I hit a home run and I hit a lot and everybody was screaming and hollering and I looked over there, that wasn't my father. Then the one time, God bless him, hey amen, if he's listening, he, he, he understands. We've talked about this. The one time he did come, he had on a red Stetson hat. He had his little liquor case and he was drunk. But I was glad he was there. A drunk father present is better than a rich father absent. 
Because that's how desperate both boys and girls are when they graduate, when they have an issue. My daughter had a problem in school. A guy my size in the seventh grade, it was middle school, I know. And she told me, and I went up there. And I would have, I would have probably got in a lot of trouble if the assistant principal hadn't stopped me. Because I knew who he was. But fathers are supposed to show you protection by being there. Amen. You wouldn't have had all them first kisses. All them first kisses. Because a real father would have made it so you couldn't get away. But you knew he going to be drunk about this time or he going to be over here. You knew, you knew him. If some of you had them, you knew, let's wait on him. And you hear him in there sounding like a bear. You know, now I can get on this one phone and talk to this little boy. Or if you was a boy, you knew I can get away. Why? Because father ain't there. So don't we need fathers? Can you say amen? amen? In Luke 15 and 20, he says, The youngest son arose and came to his father, but while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion. We need fathers that are wait because they're in the Lord. They're wait, nourish and pray and wait on their kids. Everybody know that's what mama do. She going to go to that church and sit there and rock and pray, the Lord save your soul. But daddy, like Danny Glover in the color purple, he come, he's sitting in the back, he act like he don't belong. I mean, that's, that's the picture we have of fathers. In our day, there were more men that were deacons and up front and praying and grab the bridge of their nose and pray they was old, but they were there. But you don't get a picture of fathers waiting, and that's the job of the father. He's supposed to be waiting. Somebody ought to know he might be in there praying. Be careful. He's reading his Bible. We got that image of mother. So, father, we're not just called to be providers. We work ourselves to to, to life and, and get too old to do anything, trying to provide because we've, we've taken that carrot that we're supposed to be Mr. Moneybags, Mr. Drysdale. But you ain't got no say. Who wants that deal? Just give me some money. Kids need shoes. But you ain't got no say. So, yes, we need fathers, but we need fathers that learn how to wait. Wait on God. When your daughters get grown, and your sons get grown, you got to still wait on God. You've got to pray for them, too. Because they are part of you. They came out of you. I really believe that at the judgment, at the beamer seat, I, I believe this. You don't have to. But I believe the Lord's going to ask us about all of those that uh, we brought into the world. He's going to check our attitude. Why would he be more concerned about us saving souls and, and get us up there and ask, did you try to save souls when you was down there, strangers? Because you should have. And then when it comes to our own children, fathers, oh, you had 13 kids, but that's all right. I know it was hard, wasn't it? But did you try to save souls? He's going to want to know if we tried to pray for our children because he is the example of what a father is supposed to be. He even said our fathers in the earth are evil and will still give us good gifts. But how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? He ain't said nothing about your mother. And the Holy Spirit ain't a mother. It ain't a female. You don't fool the Holy Spirit now. But we need waiting fathers. We, he says, and you fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. Fathers have the ability 
to provoke their children to wrath. And how do they do it? They do it by not being providers. Children will grow up at some point and they'll kick the wall. Why is the electric always off? It's wintertime. Ain't no food in that refrigerator. And they see mama working a job, two jobs, one job, whatever, and they, they have to. The enemy does it. Mama's not careful. She might even say, well, your father's not here, honey. It's just you and me and us. It provokes them to be thieves, to be robbers. We wouldn't have had the gangs if we'd have had godly fathers. Father's the first one to tell you, pull your pants up. Your behind is not cute. Pull your pants up. Fathers, you may outweigh your father. You may be a foot taller than him, but there's something inside of him that he will look at, at your young man and say, I brought you into this world. What's the rest of it? And there's a lot of men and women that need it to have somebody because some of them never had anybody that would stand in their face and say, before you go rob, you got to go through me because I put this house up. And then they might offer a few expertise in here, and I ain't going to lose it over you. You hear me? If you had a father, the house might not go up. Because he'll say, keep them. It's a misdemeanor, keep them. Let them learn a lesson. One of my sons, he may be watching today. 